Hi, my name is Nils Wandel, and in this talk I'll present the work of Michael Weidmann, Michael Neidlin, Reinhard Klein and myself about spline physics and formed neural networks approaching partial differential equations without data using fast physics-informed Hermit spline CNNs. So why should we care about partial differential equations? Well, PDs play an important role in many fields such as in computer graphics where we want to visualize, for example, fluids or smoke, in engineering where we want to replace expensive wind tunnel experiments by simulated computational fluid dynamics, or in basic research where we want to check whether our theories of the universe match with our observations. Unfortunately, usually we don't know closed form solutions for these PDEs, so we have to find ways to approximate them numerically. Thus, for all of the applications I just mentioned, one has to find certain trade-offs between speed and accuracy. For example, games have to run in real time while applications in engineering and basic research demand low error bounds. And obviously our goal is to get as fast and accurate as possible, or in other words, to push that boundary to the top right corner. In this regard, machine learning based approaches have recently shown very promising results. In particular, physics informed and physics constrained deep learning methods have um, gained a lot of interest since they are capable of approaching solutions of PDEs um, with little or even no ground truth data by integrating the PDEs directly into the loss function. In this work, we propose to combine both methods using Hermit spline CNNs in order to leverage the advantages of both approaches. We show that our method successfully learns fast continuous simulations of partial differential equations at the example of the damped wave equation and the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. In the following, I'll first give a short overview of our related work. Then I'll go briefly over some basic theory in order to explain our method. Afterwards, I'll present our results and at the end, I'll draw our conclusions for this work. Over the last years, two major approaches in deep learning emerged that aim to approach PDEs with neural networks using very little or even no ground truth data at all. First, physics-informed approaches aim to learn an implicit representation of the solution by training in multi-layered perception. By including the PDE directly into the loss function, they require very little or even no ground truth data at all. Important works in this field include hidden fluid mechanics and physics-informed neural networks by Raisi et al., where pins were trained to approximate solutions for the Navier-Stokes as well as the Burgers equation. And recently, Lu et al. published a deep learning library called DeepXDE for pins that supports PyTorch and TensorFlow backends. These physics-informed approaches yield smooth, continuous results that can be evaluated everywhere on a domain and are particularly suited, for example, to interpolate in between sparse data samples or to obtain, for example, a pressure field just by investigating a velocity field. However, once the implicit neural network is trained, it cannot generalize to new domains outside the training data. In contrast, physics-constrained approaches usually rely on a grid-based representation of the domain. This allows to train a convolutional neural network that can also generalize to new domains. To learn the dynamics of a PDE on that grid, the underlying PDE can be integrated into the loss function by computing finite differences. Important works in this field include the work by Thompson et al, who learned a pressure projection step using a 3D CNN and thus accelerated Eulerian fluid simulations. Zu et al used the physics constraint loss to learn Darcy flows and last year we presented a method to learn the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation from scratch. These approaches have shown to generalize well to new domains that were not contained in the training set. However, the grid discretization and the loss based on finite differences can lead to inaccuracies and discretization artifacts, um, as can be seen here in the following depiction. So to conclude, our approach aims to combine the benefits of both approaches by continuously interpolating between discrete grid supports with Hermit splines. As we'll show in a bit, this allows us to train a CNN that generalizes well to new domains without ground truth data and avoids discretization artifacts that arise from finite differences. Now I'll quickly introduce the partial differential equations that we investigated in this work. First, let's have a look at the damped wave equation. You can think of it like a membrane that oscillates and that gets damped depending on the speed of the membrane. Mathematically, we have two equations for the membrane's deflection z and the deflection speed vz within the domain omega. The time derivative of the 
membrane's deflection z has to match its speed vz and the time derivative of vz, which corresponds to the membrane's acceleration, matches the curvature of the membrane multiplied by a stiffness constant k minus the membrane's velocity multiplied by a damping constant delta. At the domain boundaries, we consider Dirichlet boundary conditions that set the membrane's deflection to a fixed value, which we can change interactively over the course of the simulation. For the initial conditions, we set z and vz to some predefined values that we usually simply set to zero. Now let's have a look at the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. Here we have a velocity field v and a pressure field p. Since the fluid is incompressible, the divergence of the velocity field has to be zero within the domain. This equation is often referred to as incompressibility equation. Furthermore, we have the momentum equation, which states that the change of momentum of the fluid particles has to match the sum of forces acting on them. These forces consist of viscous friction, the pressure gradient, and external forces, which we neglect here for the sake of simplicity. To ensure incompressibility, we can exploit the Helmholtz decomposition theorem, which states that every vector field V can be decomposed into the gradient of a scalar potential Q plus the curl of a vector potential A. And note that the divergence of the curl of any vector potential is always zero. So if we set V equal to the curl of A, we essentially get the divergence equation for free. Regarding the boundary conditions, we consider again Dirichlet boundary conditions that set the fluid's velocity to fixed values at the domain boundaries. Again, these boundary conditions can be changed interactively during the simulation. And for the initial conditions, we set the velocity as well as the pressure field to some predefined values, usually simply zero. To solve these equations, we propose a novel spline pin model, which looks as follows. The state of the simulation is given by discrete spline coefficients that are arranged on a uniform grid. To evolve these spline coefficients in time for given boundary conditions at time t, we use a convolutional neural network, which is denoted here as PDE model. The boundary conditions consist of a binary mask for the domain boundaries and a vector field that contains the field values at the boundaries. The design of this PDE model can vary depending on the specific PDE we want to solve. For example, for the Navier-Stokes equation, we use the UNet, while for the wave equation, a simple feedforward CNN was already sufficient. More details on that can be found in our supplementary material. To obtain continuous field values from these discrete spline coefficients, we interpolate with Hermit spline kernels. Hermit spline kernels of degree L are piecewise polynomials and an important property of Hermit splines of order L is that their L plus 1's derivative are of bounded variation. For example, for L equals 0, we can take the first derivative and obtain a bounded function. If we would take the second derivative, we would run into problems at the support points. For L equal 1, we can take the first and second derivatives. And for L equal 2, we also can take third derivatives and still obtain bounded functions. This will become important later when we want to compute the physics-informed loss, since we have to choose the right Hermit spline order depending on the order of the PDE. In multiple dimensions, for example x, y and time, we can take the outer product of these 1D kernel functions. And to finally obtain a continuous field, we linearly combine these kernel functions centered around the grid points x hat, y hat, t hat and weighted by the corresponding spline coefficients c. So if we have another look at our spline pin depiction, this is how we obtain continuous fields from our discrete spline coefficients. Okay, now let's have a look at the physics informed loss function. To compute this loss function, we integrate the squared residuals of the underlying PDEs over the domain omega and boundary conditions over the domain's boundary. The integral is computed by drawing random samples at different grid offsets within the domain omega and its boundary. Here for the wave equation, you can see that we have second order derivatives for the Laplacian offset. Thus, as mentioned before, we need at least first order Hermit spline kernels in x and y. Otherwise, we run into problems with this integral. The final loss term consists of a weighted sum of these terms with hyperparameters alpha, beta and gamma. For the Navier-Stokes equation, we can proceed similarly. As we are using a vector potential, the velocity field is automatically divergence-free, 
So we only have to care about the momentum equation. Since we have third order derivatives of the vector potential due to the viscosity term, we need at least second order Hermite splines for the vector potential in X and Y to compute the momentum loss LP. Like for the wave equation, we compute a weighted sum of the momentum and boundary loss terms with hyperparameters alpha and beta to obtain the final loss term. To train our spline pin models without data, we use the same data recycling strategy as we already introduced last year at ICLR. But here we replace the discrete physics constraint loss based on finite differences with the continuous physics informed loss that I just introduced for our Hermit spline interpolations. The training cycle works as follows. First, we zero initialize a training pool that contains randomized boundary conditions. Then we draw a random mini batch that contains boundary conditions and spline coefficients of the current PDE state. And we feed that batch into our PDE model. This PDE model then predicts the spline coefficients of the PDE state at the next time step. By interpolating, we obtain a continuous field description, which can be sampled in order to compute the physics informed loss. Using back propagation and the Adam optimizer, we update the model with respect to that loss. Furthermore, we update the training pool with the just predicted spline coefficients. And this way, in every cycle, we not only improve the model, but we also fill up the training pool with more and more realistic training data. Now I'll present our results. As you can see in this depiction, our spline pin model was able to learn several interesting effects for the damped wave equation, all without crunchless data during training. In the top row, you can see interference patterns, which appear when multiple waves from different directions overlap. The Doppler effect visible in the second row shortens the wavelengths of a moving oscillator in the direction of travel. In this case, the oscillator moves to the right, so the wavelength is shortened on the right side. This effect is well known, for example, from the change in pitch of ambulance cars passing by. In the bottom row, you can see reflections of the waves on the Dirichlet domain boundaries. And now you can see these simulations, how they were computed in real time. To investigate the stability of the spline pin method for the wave equation, we plotted the evolution of the individual loss terms over time. As you can see in this graph, after a short initial warm-up phase, the simulation remained stable over hundreds of iterations. In the beginning, the loss values are a bit smaller since we set the initial conditions to zero, which fit the wave equation very well in this phase of the simulation. We tested Hermit splines of order 1 and order 2 in X and Y and observed significant improvements for second order splines as shown in this table. Our next experiments concerns the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. In this video, we show how we can change the domain boundaries in real time and interact with the fluid simulation performed by our spline pin method. And in this clip, you can see that our method also deals with the Magnus effect. The Magnus effect produces a characteristic low pressure field that appears at spinning objects within the flow field and is often exploited in sports such as soccer or tennis. We performed several experiments for a wide range of Reynolds numbers. The Reynolds number is an important unit free quantity to characterize fluid dynamics. It puts the fluid's density, speed, viscosity, and obstacle size into relation as written down here. At very low Reynolds numbers, we can obtain laminar and even time reversible flow fields. At Reynolds 100, we obtain an oscillating von Kármán Botex street, and at high Reynolds numbers, we get turbulent flow fields. In our next experiment, we investigated the forces exerted by the fluid on a cylinder at Reynolds 100. The left image shows the forces by viscous friction, which are parallel to the cylinder surface. The right image shows the forces by the pressure field, perpendicular to the surface. To obtain the total forces, we have to sum up over both force components. From these forces, we can compute the drag and lift coefficients of the cylinder. As you can see in this image, the drag coefficient stays close to 3, 
while the lift coefficient oscillates over time with the same frequency as the von Kármán vortex treat. We performed this experiment at several different Reynolds numbers and compared our results to other data-free deep learning based methods. As a reference, we used official benchmark results and the professional industrial CFD solver analysis. In contrast to the other data-free deep learning based methods, our spline pin approach got significantly closer to the reference values. And in contrast to ANSYS, which took about 37 minutes at Reynolds 100, our spline pin approach was significantly faster as it performed the simulation in real time, which took only about 10 seconds. Since the implicit pin doesn't generalize to new domains, we had to retrain it entirely, which took about one day. Here we show a qualitative comparison of an implicit pin, the marker and cell grid approach, our spline pin method, and ANSYS at Reynolds 100. Note that we didn't manage to learn the oscillating von Karman vortex street behavior with the implicit pin. We believe this is because we gave our networks only information about the Dirichli boundary conditions, while other works that used implicit pins um, for the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation feed the neural networks also with simulated data, either directly or through boundary conditions. And this is not what we want here. The results of the marker and cell grid approach and spline pin approach, however, match well qualitatively with the reference simulation. Finally, we also investigated the stability of our spline pin method for the Navier-Stokes equation. As for the wave equation, the simulation starts with a short initial warm-up phase. Since we zero initialize the vector potential, the boundary conditions at the in and outlets of the domain are not met at the beginning of the simulation, leading to high divergence errors. However, the network starts up the simulation fairly quickly and after around 100 iterations, we get stable results for hundreds and even thousands of time steps. So in conclusion, we can say, spline pins combine the advantages of physics-informed and physics-constrained neural networks. They offer fast, interactive real-time simulations, allow for continuous interpolations, avoid discretization artifacts, are fully differentiable, generalized to new domains and don't require any crunchers data for training. Furthermore, the accuracy for drag and lift coefficients of data-free deep learning based methods gets closer to professional industrial CFD solvers like ANSYS while being orders of magnitudes faster. However, our method still comes with some limitations. For example, here we only looked at Dirichli boundary conditions and only considered two-dimensional flows. Furthermore, we used a uniform grid resolution. To compensate these limitations, one could also add Neumann boundary conditions or extend the PDE models to 3D convolutional neural networks. To refine the accuracy at critical areas of the domain, one could use a multi-grid approach. And since the pipeline is fully differentiable, it might be also useful in reinforcement learning scenarios for sensitivity analysis or to do gradient-based shape optimization for example, of ring profiles. If you want to have a look at our source code or even want to try out some of our pre-trained models, then please have a look at our GitHub repository. Thanks a lot for your attention. And if you have questions, remarks or ideas, then we are really looking forward to get in touch with you.